Anyone know what that is? A crush. Of oh, some sort. A crush of some sort. It's a good one. A grinder. That is a universal nut sheller. And it does exactly what it says it does. It removes nuts from shells. Okay? That's a universal nut sheller. I want you to remember that. And I'm talking today about solid waste management in sanitary landfills. And my first slide is a universal nut sheller. So what does this have to do with sanitation, solid waste management, sanitary landfills? But if, yeah, to find that out, you just going to have to stay tuned. Okay. Um, I am, in fact, relatively new to Armenia. I uh, arrived here in June of 2011, fresh off a 20-year teaching career, history and government. I came out here to work for the Armenian Environmental Network, AEN. And as it turns out, uh, my former student uh, is the current president of um, AEN. Her name is Ursula Kazarian, and she's the one that hired me. I came out here, uh, I arrived in Armenia, and she gave me my first task. She said, Kirk, and she didn't call me Mr. Wallace anymore. She called me Kirk. <laughs> she, said, she said, I want you to study and research everything you can about solid waste management and sanitary landfills. And of course, I said, no problem. I'll do it gladly. And so for the next three months, that's basically all I did. I researched. I hit the, as we say, the books. Uh, when I was at school now, you hit the Google. I hit the books, and I researched as much as I could, and I learned quite a bit. For example, I learned that um, there's a solid waste management problem in Armenia, and it's pretty, it's pretty severe and it's growing. Uh, solid waste management, by the way, is about trash or garbage, as we would call it. Uh, I also learned that it is not an Armenian problem. It is a global problem, and it's growing nearly, this issue with waste management. You want proof of that, uh, Google up uh, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch or Google Plastic and Midway Island. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, in addition, I also learned uh, quite a bit about Armenia in specific. I learned that Armenia had not one, not a single sanitary landfill at the time in June of 2011. Not one. It had dumps, however, had close to 500 approximate registered dumps. None of them sanitary. And it had, it still does to this day, thousands of what I call dumplets little tiny areas where trash appears and all the, the spots when you're driving along the side of the road and backyards, ditches, gullies, creeks, rivers, these little dumplets and they're all over the place. And essentially, uh, Ursula uh, asked me, Ursula Kazarian asked me to research this and come up with some solutions for the problem in Armenia. And so that's what I set out to do. And along the way, I learned quite a bit. I learned that it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be and I learned that uh, I was going to have some serious positive disruption if I was going to be able to figure out this problem for Armenia. Okay, so I came up with some solutions. We're going to talk about those, but before we get there, I want to just go over a little bit about Armenia in, the, in a visual sense, what's going on. Uh, we're all here in Armenia, and we know that Armenia is absolutely beautiful. And in times, it's just impossibly beautiful. It is incredible, has incredible mountain ranges, streams, rivers, creeks, valleys, gorges, we know this, we live here. Um, and what makes it even more amazing is the fact that it's all crammed into this tiny little area. Armenia is about the size of the country of Switzerland. For you Americans, think Maryland. It's about the size of Maryland. And it's incredibly diverse in its ecosystems. Um, and the landscapes are second to none. Unfortunately, however, the landscapes are becoming more and more like this. So what would be a beautiful vista is cluttered with garbage. And I want you to notice the type of garbage that's there. These are predominantly um, plastic waste. And this is a new problem in Armenia. Uh, this waste has only arrived in this country in the last, say, 10 to 15 years. And so the, the, the repositories that were put in here by the Soviet Union, they weren't equipped to handle this kind of garbage. And as a result, we have this buildup and these problems now, and we have to figure out solutions for these, uh, for these kinds of situations. Um, let's check out what I'm talking about in a little more detail. Uh, let's talk about dumps, okay? A dump is exactly what it sounds like. You bring up a load of garbage and you dump it. 
In this case, you dump it here. Dump it right down the chute, right down towards the creek. Out of sight, out of mind. That's how it works here in Armenia to a certain degree. Uh, you can see the waste stream there, the plastics, the bags, the bottles, the wrappers. All the Western packaging ends up in these kinds of dumps. And the first thing we notice is that they're ugly. Yeah, they're ugly. And it's unsightly. But that's not even the worst problem. The worst problem is that it's damaging to nature. It really does harm the environment. And even worse than that, perhaps, is the fact that this poses a threat to public health and safety. And so when I started to look at this stuff, it was like, OK, we need to address these three issues. It's unsightly, it's damaging the environment, and it's dangerous for people. Uh, case in point, this dump right here. This is the Baird Municipal Dump. Baird is a little town in a very remote region, uh, the Tavush region. Um, and this dump is 50 years old, built by the Soviets in 1963. It didn't look like this for most of its existence. It's right up the side of the road, and there it is from, uh, from up above. You can see that the trucks drive up, they dump the trash, and they leave. They don't really manage it uh, in any fashion, uh, and it burns continually. Okay? And, it's, and if we look at it from this angle, the dump on the left there, you can see that it's also surrounding this dump. You have fields, you have orchards, you have agriculture, and down below there is a river. So we have an issue. Dumps are not meant to be healthy and safe. Three big problems. Ugly, environmentally bad, bad for public health and safety. Okay, so I've talked about dumps. Let's talk about a landfill. I want to put landfills in. What is a landfill? This is a landfill. And I want you to remember one thing about a landfill. A landfill is uh, it's, an environment, it's an engineered ecosystem. And it's engineered to be safe. And what the main thing a landfill is trying to protect is the groundwater. You can see the groundwater down here from the stuff that comes out of uh, a dump or a landfill. And this particular worst part of, of a landfill is called leachate. A leachate is simply toxic liquid that forms when water hits garbage. And then it goes down to the ground, it gets into the, the water table, and maybe you pump it up and you're drinking it in your house. You can see the problems. Modern landfills, western landfills, are designed to protect against this leakage. And they do this in a variety of ways. They can either make a compacted clay liner to prevent the filtration, or they can put what's called a geosynthetic membrane across the entire bottom of the landfill, and this holds in this leachate. Then you can pump out this leachate, and you can treat it and make it safe. You can also see these pipes sticking up out of the, the landfill. That's the bleed off methane gas buildups. If there's too much buildup, it might spontaneously combust, then it sets on fire, and then you release all these toxins into the air, and that's unhealthy. There are a bunch of other aspects to a landfill. I'm not going to go over them, but you can see that it's highly engineered and designed to be safe. So, I came over here to try to figure out how we're going to get landfills in, in Armenia. We have no landfills, yet we have a working model right here. We know how to do them. We know, we know the designs. How come we don't have these in Armenia? What's preventing them from being all over the country? Anybody? Money. 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 These cost a lot of money. A lot of money. And when I started, the other thing I learned when I started uh, researching this, was that I could not justify putting that kind of money into a little tiny place like this. Okay? And I'm an environmentalist. And I said, there's no way. The economies of scale don't justify it. It didn't make sense to put a gigantic, beautiful, Western-style landfill here. I could have quit. I, I was frustrated. I was a little worried. I was like, I don't know what we're going to do. I said, we just can't do it. Um, but I'm a guy that believes that every citizen in Armenia, and the world for that matter, deserves to have a healthy living place, a space where they can live and be, and be healthy. And so I didn't want to give up. I wanted to figure out a way in which we could create a safe place to put your garbage. Because until we figure out how to take care of 100% of the waste stream, until we figure out how to recycle or reuse or upcycle all the garbage, we're going to need these kinds of places. And not just Armenia, this is a global issue. Developing world, non-developed world, they're going to need this kind of thing if they're going to have safe environments. So, 
This was my positive disruption moment. I was at a standstill. I couldn't figure out what to do. I couldn't figure out where to go. And I just decided one day, I said, the West doesn't have the answer to this. I have to look other places than the West. And in this case, I visited an old friend. This old friend uh, was a philosophy that I was interested in. Before I even came to the country, I presented this uh, idea to my boss. I said, I have the solution. And the solution is this. The universal nutshell is the solution <laughs> to Armenia's problems with sanitation. And um, she, she looked at me rather as you would expect. And she's tolerant. And, um, and she allowed me to explain that this universal nutsheller isn't just a clever, cool gadget. This is literally the very poster child of a new, work, a new movement in development work. It's called appropriate technology. And this is the poster child of appropriate technology. Appropriate technology is a philosophy for positive change. And it's a way to create positive change that makes sense for the locality. And you have to match certain criteria if it's going to be appropriate. So, for example, this, uh, this unit here is, number one, it's environmentally friendly. There's nothing too bad environment about this. It's locally produced with local resources, both all, uh, human and natural resources. Okay? It's locally controlled. It is low-tech. We, we prefer appropriate technology to be low-tech. It doesn't have to be. And it, it works. It's quite effective. And it's sustainable. So all of these factors lead in to building this unit. This was uh, created by the Full Belly Project. This picture is from Africa. Now, if you just think it's a clever gadget and you're not thinking big enough, I want you to expand your mind a little bit. The nuts in this bin, it takes about, what, less than a minute to remove shells from nuts. But if somebody was to do that by hand, it could take them an hour. It could take them more. I don't really know. I've never tried it. So what you're looking at here isn't just a shell remover, you're looking at an emancipation device. An emancipation device. This device frees up people that use it. What do I mean by that? It provides them additional time. It allows them to produce additional product. They can then spend this additional time working on livestock or in the fields. And because we know in Armenia, it's obvious that women do most of the work. And because we know, because it's quite obvious, that around the world, women do most of the work, this is really, in particular, uh, an emancipation tool for women. So it has particular uh, value for me in that as well. So this is what I uh, presented to my boss. I said, we're going to do this. Uh, except we're not going to make a nutsheller. We're going to apply this philosophy to a landfill design. Okay? It hasn't been done before, but we're going to do it. So the next thing I had to do is I had to find somebody to believe in this. So I was like, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And I started writing to people. All these organizations, hey, are you interested in this? You want to help me design this? You want to be the first to design this? This appropriate technology landfill? No, no thank you, not on our budget, not part of our mandate. What's appropriate technology? Um, and I got nowhere. And I was getting, again, a little frustrated, a little worried I couldn't find the solution to this, until my cousin Josh, the guy sitting right next to me, came to my rescue. I was in New York, and I was having this conversation about appropriate technology, and he was like, yeah, that's interesting. And I was whining a little bit to him, and like a good cousin, he didn't say, quit your whining. He said, hey, I know two guys that are just crazy enough to listen to you. <laughs> crazy? How crazy? And he said, they're pretty crazy. And I said, perfect, <laughs> hook me up. And we did. We sat down at this, uh, this little tavern, uh, had a couple of ales to, to get the creative juices flowing. The guy on the right, Joe Schaefer, JFS Engineering, the guy taking the picture, Ben Walmer, our architect. And we sat and we chatted about appropriate technology first. Then we moved on to this idea of the landfill. And when Joe pulled out the paper and started putting scribbles on it, and I saw slopes and angles and numbers, math, trigonometry maybe, I said, we got it. We have something, we have an idea, and I think it could work. We took this idea back to Armenia, back to the very site in which it all started. The landfill is up on the right. Uh, we are just below it now. It's the same spot in Baird. And we decided to put our new landfill here. This is where it's going to go. And rather than invent something, we decided to take appropriate technologies from all over the world, international best practices, appropriate technologies, to put into this, this landfill design in this concept in a holistic manner. So, for example, 
Um, coming down, we have to collect the leachate, and we have to make sure it's protected and that it could be treated. Well, we don't have fancy equipment or the money to provide fancy equipment to treat it. So what we decided to do is try to have Mother Nature do this. And Mother Nature is going to do this for us. How's Mother Nature going to do it? We're going to use what's called phytoremediation. And phytoremediation is the use of plants to suck toxics right out of the ground, sequester or hold these toxics in their plant body till you can harvest them to make them safe. We don't need the equipment, we have plants to do this. And it's gonna go where that circle is, okay? We need water. Well, we could pump this water up from the river down below, or we could collect our water, because pipes and pumps cost money. So we might put in a water harvester, a rainwater harvester. Collect the water, hold it in cisterns. We might put it there where the circle is. Okay? What about the organics? Why throw those away? Why not reuse them? Okay, why not? We'll compost them. We'll make compost, we'll package the compost, sell it, help pay for the maintenance of the landfill. And we think we can put this compost bin right there. We might even try, try a new type of compost that I learned about called Bokashi. It's actually where you pickle your waste and you have not only a solid product, but you have a, a liquid product as well. So we're going to try that. And finally, we might even try uh, to produce some uh, energy crops. Energy crops that can be made into bio pellets to burn in the wood stove so that uh, we don't have to cut down any more forests. In Armenia, there's a problem with deforestation. Okay? Switchgrass is one such uh, energy crop, or perhaps industrial hemp, which grows wild here. So we haven't decided yet. And we're going to put it there. So what we have done is collected some international best practices. We're working on the design as we speak. This, when we're done, we want this to be replicable. We want this to not only go in Baird, but all over Armenia, and we want it perhaps to go global. We want this to work for any developing nation or non-developed nation, and it makes sense. We think it can be done. We lack funding for this part of the project, but I'm not worried we're going to get it because it makes sense, and you just have to sit down and chat with people, and they'll see it. This is the sexy part of the project. The not-so-sexy part of the project is taking place right now. We are funded for this, and we are currently working in Baird and Shamshadin doing the real appropriate technology, which is education. We are working with the citizens, we are doing environmental education workshops, composting workshops, uh, building the capacity to deal with their waste, giving them an idea of their relationship with their environment and with their waste stream. Uh, just putting a landfill in would be a waste of our time. So we're in there working for two years doing educational projects in order for this area to be the first in the country to have what we call an integrated waste management program. We're working with some great partner organizations and it's going quite well so far. So let me end with this. When I first arrived in Armenia, uh, truly, uh, Donkey and I knew about the same regarding sanitary landfills, okay? Uh, but all I did was apply myself to learn what was going on. I allowed myself to be positively disrupted for positive change. I changed the way I approached this, this problem. I said, the West doesn't have the answers, let's look for local solutions. And I challenged every one of you in here to do the same thing. I know you already do, that's why you're sitting here in this audience. Uh, and I'm honored to be speaking to you today. And to end my presentation today, I would like to invite anybody here that wants to talk to me further about uh, what we're doing there or about appropriate technology. We can continue this conversation. Okay, thank you very much.